Welcome to the Purely Podcast. I'm your host, Alicia Pope, health coach, wellness expert. You can consider me your online bestie too. Imagine we're having a green juice together or a glass of wine for that matter. I believe in wellness that empowers you and lifts you up. On this podcast, you can expect a 360 degree view of wellness. But remember, there's no perfect when it comes to our health. It's whatever works for us. With that, let's dive in. Enjoy. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Purely Podcast. This is your host, Alicia. And today we are sitting down with my good friend, my business bestie, as I love to call her, Taryn Shank. And Per usual with Taryn, you are going to get a lot of us and it's kind of like a behind the scenes conversation that we would typically have off air because we are friends and we talk pretty much every single week off air about a lot of this stuff. So you're getting that inside look here and I'm just kind of picking her brain for you guys on her journey and her approach to really healing your relationship with food to also getting improved body image along the way, and also to finding the balance between nutrition education and healing your relationship with food. Because I think that is so important. And Taryn does such a good job of it, of really being able to educate in an empowering way without inducing food fears around that. And that's a really hard thing to do. And I think it's something that a lot of people have a hard time doing. So we definitely dive into that as well. And another thing that I wanted to mention to you guys in case anybody is in this realm before we dive in is that Taryn and I are offering another round of our Coaching for Coaches program. So as you guys both know, or as you may know, both Taryn and I are graduates of the Institute of Integrative Nutrition, and we have both built full-time health coaching businesses that are surrounding our health coaching journeys. So that being said, last year, we developed a program because we saw so many coaches that were coming to us asking us for our advice on how to get started, how to take it full time, how to build a program, how to monetize things, how to organize, what are the different streams of revenue that you can do? How do I organize my program? How do I get past imposter syndrome? How can I really just learn to sell myself and sell my story? How do I even figure out what my story is, et cetera, marketing, all of that stuff, attracting clients, selling clients, etc. So we developed a program based on this. And we had 25 graduates last year that have all absolutely loved the program. We also had it available on replay. And that is still available on replay as well. But we're launching another round of the program. It's going to be the exact same program with a few tweaks from the feedback that we got. So each of these sessions is actually going to include extra time for Q&A with Taryn and I. And then we also have the option to do a VIP option if you feel like you need more support where you get one-on-one coaching from Taryn and I as well, as well as text access to us too throughout the program. So that's a huge value too. So if you are a health coach, if you are in the Institute of Integrative Nutrition right now or a new health coach that is really wanting to learn how to take your business full-time, if you feel like you need that support, then this program is for you. It's kicking off on March. 14th. And it will be happening for six weeks every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern. But that being said, all of the sessions will be recorded. So if a time doesn't work for you, you can get that sent out and you also got an accountability partner and so much more. So if you want even more from Taryn and I, and you are a health coach and you're looking for support in that realm, then I would definitely recommend checking that out. The link is in the show notes to get that. And also you can use code podcast to get $50 off of the program. So definitely take advantage of that. That's either during early bird, like we're doing right now, as well as during once it hits the full price pricing as well. So that kicks off March 14th. We're super excited. It's going to be amazing, especially with just some of the feedback and tweaks that we made to the program. We're so excited about it. And it's just so nice because everybody has already seen great success from it. And we love seeing how much all the coaches have really like thrived since taking the program last year. 
That being said, I want to give you my health coaching tip of the day in case you aren't a health coach, but this also is going to apply to you even if you are a health coach. So my health coaching tip of the day is really surrounding the fact of don't let nutrition information scare you, but rather let it empower you. Because I think that in all of this, I think that if you're here listening, I think that you are probably somebody who wants to have a really healthy relationship with food. You want to be healthy. You want to feel your best. You want to feel confident in your mind and your body. And to do that, I think that the foundation is having a healthy relationship with food. And with that, I don't think that you can do that without also having the education behind it. And I want you to allow that information to really empower you instead of let it scare you, right? Because I think that how we look at it can be very different, right? It's like all about the mindset shifts. I know you guys are probably like, okay, we get it, the mindset shifts. But the mindset shifts are really, really important when we're thinking about this stuff and just how we're thinking about it. So instead of, oh my gosh, I had this thing and like, I really shouldn't have had it and it was bad for me, et cetera. Number one, the stress around that is bad and the language around that is bad, is worse for you than the food itself. But also I think it's empowering to know like, okay, yes, I could maybe add in some protein to this to make it, you know, digest slower so that it doesn't spike my blood sugar as much. Or from another realm, you look at it and you're like, oh, yep, it makes sense that my body is reacting in this way because I know exactly how my body is reacting chemically, right? Because you know that, you know how your body is reacting because you're empowered to know that. And then you can make a decision moving forward. You can say, yep, but I enjoyed that, right? Or you could say, "Mm, I actually really didn't enjoy that that much to feel that way again. And so I don't want to do that again moving forward. But I think that empowerment is really, really important. So I think using the nutrition and information and education as empowerment versus any sort of fear or anything like that is really, really important. So without further ado, please help me welcome Taryn Shank to the Purely Podcast. Hi, Taryn. I am so excited to have you back on the podcast again. For anybody who doesn't know, Taryn and I are friends in real life and have done a lot together. So I feel like most of you probably are familiar with Taryn already. But we're going to be talking about a little bit of different things today than we have in the past. So, you know, like when we were talking about like confidence or health coaching, et cetera, and like the business side of things. But we're going to dive more into Taryn's story and how she got to what she was doing today. So Taryn, for anybody that might not be familiar, like, can you just give a brief background on like who you are, what you do, and how you ended up doing what you are doing today as a health coach and business owner and doing all the things you do? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, I'm so excited to be here chatting with my business bestie. um, And this is going to be a super (laughs) fun podcast. So thanks for having me. Um, But so I am Taryn. I am an IAN health coach and recent certified personal trainer. So that's exciting. Um, I went to I went to IAN like back in 2015. So it was a long time ago, just like a brief, try to be as brief as possible with my story. But I was kind of just living the normal American diet, normal American lifestyle partying in college, eating and drinking whatever I wanted, never thought about health, never knew anything about health. Um, I just probably knew it was like a good idea not to eat McDonald's every day, even though that's what I was doing. But that was like all the knowledge I had on health at this point. I never worked out before. I hated the gym. Um, Anyway, so I was in college and I was just like kind of spinning my wheels trying to find like purpose and what I was doing there because I had no idea like really why I was in college. I ended up dropping out my junior year. So I think I had one year left and I just like took a year off because I had no idea what I was doing. Just didn't feel fulfilled. I switched my major three times. It was just like I needed to kind of figure out what was going to be the right route for me. And I didn't feel like anything in college at that time was. So I took a year off and this is when like Instagram just came out. Yeah, it was a long time ago. (laughs) I was like, there was no Instagram app. (laughs) It it just came out. People were just starting to share at this time. And so using it as like filters. I remember that at the end of college, it was like I was using Instagram (laughs) as like a filter app. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. The first picture I ever posted was like, Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> and it was That's like amazing. filtered with like a little TV around it or something like that. <laughs> Anyways, Instagram has come a long way. So back in that time, there was 
just a couple people sharing about health and wellness and fitness. And the person that stands out the most is Lauren Gilsberg or something. She's pretty big today. So I got into her stuff and started working out and started learning a little bit about like health and like how to actually fuel your body. I started eating a little bit healthier, making my own food, seeing results in my body and feeling really, really good. I became so obsessed with creating my own food and like making present, like pretty presentations and stuff like that, that I thought I wanted to become like own a cafe and be a cafe owner. So (laughs) I went to a local cafe back where I'm from in Indiana. And I knew the owner of the cafe and she was also a naturopathic doctor and then had this cafe and juice bar. At the cafe and juice bar, she um, did her practice like through that as well. So she would take her patients and her clients and then kind of like feed them the food Um, that's going to support their body. And she helped people with all different kinds of things from like cancer to candida, like all over. So I studied, oh, I missed this part. Well, I talked to her and interviewed her about how to, uh, how did she start a cafe? Basically, like, what do I need to do? I wanted to interview somebody who had already done that. And she offered me an internship at her cafe and under her naturopathic practice. And I was like, yes, this sounds perfect. So I interned with her for a year I learned so much about health, like so much about gut health, so much about the foods that we're eating, about toxins. Like my whole life was changed. I did all different kinds of diets and cleanses and all of that kind of stuff, which we'll get more into that later. I don't do that kind of stuff as much anymore. But at that (laughs) time, I was kind of cleansing my body and I started feeling so, so good. I didn't have any clue like you could actually feel that good in your body. And when I started to become like way healthier and just start feeling way better, I was like, I know that this is what I have to do. Like, this is my passion. This is my purpose. I have to show people and tell as many people as possible that you can feel this good. And so long story, kind of shorter, I ended up finding IAN. I took a sample class and then, um, yeah, the rest is history. So I started my business online probably five years ago now, and I've grown it to take clients all over the world, help them with food freedom, binge eating, learning how to eat and support their body, hormone stuff and all of that. So yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so much, so much to break down yeah, there. Um, <laughs> you, you mentioned something too about, you know, how you don't necessarily do that approach of like the trying different diets and the, the, the cleanses and things like that. So looking back, like what were, what were some of the things and like, what were some of the signs that you noticed that you needed to make a change? Like, can you tell a little bit more into that and to like, maybe what wasn't working and what you realized eventually wasn't necessarily like the healthy approach to food and fitness and health in general and how you notice those signs and then like how you kind of move forward from there. Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, I was doing all the cleanses and just eating perfectly. Like I would not be caught going to any restaurant that didn't have perfect ingredients. Like if they used canola oil, I was not going, um, the, it, I had this thing called orthorexia. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it. I know you have. And that's kind of where you yeah. try to be perfect with your diet and your lifestyle. Um, and I found out it was like not serving me and pretty toxic actually to be living that way. When I moved to Arizona like five years ago, um, and this stuff was still happening when I lived back home and was doing the perfect eating, but I wasn't aware of it for some reason. So when I moved to Arizona, I got a boyfriend and we started like going out a lot more and going to hang with friends and like grab drinks and grab dinner. And I was like that annoying person that wouldn't go or like wouldn't eat or would be like, Oh no, let's not go here. Like, I don't want to eat there. Like, can we all go to this vegan place that nobody wants to eat at? You know what I mean? Like it was just (laughs) kind of running. It was like kind of ruining my social life and like running and like in, it was running into my relationship and causing a problem in my relationship. So that's Mm -hmm. when I kind of started to become like aware of like, okay, this probably is like not serving me. Like this isn't the life that you want to live. How is this healthy if you can't even like go hang out with your friends without stressing out about what you're going to be putting in your mouth? So kind of started to become aware of it when I moved to Arizona. And then I started to become even more aware of it when I was aware. And then I'd see like a my boyfriend would bring home like tortilla chips, but they weren't the kind of tortilla chips that like I would eat. So I'd start like Mm -hmm. having anxiety and kind of like freaking out about it and overreacting and stressing out so much. Like my body could feel the stress because of this canola, canola oil in these chips or whatever. And that's when I finally realized like, this is not a healthy relationship with food. 
This is actually yeah. a pretty toxic relationship with food. So for like a year, I slowly challenged myself to enter like the food freedom world, which that was kind of hard to do on your own, especially. And I was doing everything on my own, challenging myself with food fears, eating the foods that I weren't, wasn't comfortable with, putting myself in the position to go out to eat at a place that I normally wouldn't want to, and just like trying to be okay with it. Um, I've healed myself since then and I've come like a long way to where I feel like I am fully free from food controlling my life or stressing me out in any way. And now that's obviously what I help a lot of people with. Um, yeah. Does that answer the question? All right, love. Let's take a brief break to chat about all that's new on purely you for the month of February, which is going to be, of course, focused on self love. I am super excited for the challenge that we're doing this month and all the new flows that are coming your way this month. This month, you are getting seven new flows, which is absolutely amazing. And we will be hosting a self love club challenge that is kicking off on February. 12th. So if you are wanting to prioritize yourself, really just learn to appreciate yourself and fall more in love with that best version of you, then this is the time to join and try it out. And if you didn't know, Purely You is full of body loving Pilates flows and motivational health coaching. And throughout the challenge, we will be focusing on shifting from self love to self appreciation, body appreciation and acceptance, how we can shift the negative self-talk in our mind to positive how the relationship with yourself sets the tone for every relationship that you have and really how self-improvement is the key to self-love and looking at that and prioritizing that. So it will be seven days of body loving Pilates movements with coaching and daily challenges. And also everybody who signs up for the challenge. And if you are a purely you member during the month of February, you will receive a $10 gift card to Bala, which if you are not familiar, Bala is my absolute ride or die for all Pilates equipment. So I always use their Bala bangles for one or two pound wrists and ankle weights. I love their Pilates ball, their mat. I'm just obsessed with literally everything that they have. So that is an extra added perk to sign up and claim your seven day free trial. So if you haven't already tried out Purely You, then just claim your free trial and you can do the entire challenge for free free and stick around if you like it. So definitely head to the link in the show notes below, or just go to purelypope.com and click the on demand and you can claim your seven day free trial of purely you hope to see you there. Let's get back to the show. Yeah. And I think like I resonate with that so much too, where you have to look and and I had like a moment slowly, like, I feel like there's never really this like, oh yeah, one day I just woke up and I was like, yep, nope, this isn't working, you know, but it's slowly these like thoughts or things that you're starting to realize that aren't working anymore. And I had a very similar Mm -hmm. experience where I was like, why am I not eating this thing anymore that I used to love. Right. And I was just like, that's weird. Like, why am I not doing that? Like this is Mm -hmm. a whole food or whatever, you know, or even looking and seeing and like really just evaluating a relationship with quote unquote health and wellness too. And I was probably a little bit on the spectrum Mm -hmm. of like that orthorexia too, because I think that, and this is something I always like say as well. And like, I know you and I are like, so on the same page with like everything, but I always say that it's like when health gets to the point where it's It's like prohibiting you from living your life and from being able to have healthy relationships, from going on the vacation, from going out to eat, from going in social situations, et cetera. And it's causing you more stress. Then like that stress is worse for you than this overall, you know, like quote unquote, like the name of health. And sometimes too, it's like, I've even heard like the most influential people in the health space. Like you never want to get to a point where you're like, quote unquote, too pure that like then when you have Mm -hmm. something that has something in it that maybe is not the quote unquote cleanest that then your body it's like oh my gosh wrecks havoc right like you don't want to be this like temple either that you can't yet your body can't defend from those things so something I would love your opinion on because you talk about it a lot too is finding balance between like the education and and nutrition education and ingredient education etc like there's so many areas areas of that, that I feel like falls under like health education, 
But then also finding that balance with food freedom. Like for example, you were talking about this the other day with Simply Orange, right? Where you were like, oh, I just did a campaign with them. And now there's this like toxic thing that came out. And you're like, by the way, like don't like you can kind of divulge and see like what works for you or what doesn't or what you want to stay away from, but not fearing things because of that. And I feel like it's such a delicate balance to find. So can you speak a little bit on that and like your experience with it and what has really helped you to find that balance? Yeah, I think it's kind of exactly what you said, fear, like fear is what kind of stops everyone in their tracks. And fear is that thing that can really, really hold you back. And fear causes stress. And just like you said, stress is so much worse for you than eating the food that maybe isn't optimal health. Stress is going to do so much more hold back on your system on your body than eating something not perfect and fear causes stress. So when you're being presented with information, we'll use the simply orange situation as um, an example. And it came out, they're in a lawsuit because they have a hundred times more of this toxic chemical than is allowed is with regulation Mm -hmm. with FDA and everything. Um, So I shared that. Right. And a lot of people might've seen that and been like, Oh my gosh, like I am so afraid to eat this. Like, what am I going to do? I can never drink this again. Like, what is my family going to drink? Um, I've been drinking this for 10 years. Like, did this hurt me? You know, just the fear takes you down like a terrible tunnel. So when you're approaching a situation where you have to make a decision, if you're going to choose to drink this orange juice, right? Because that situation might be presented to you still. I would take away the fear and just take what you know about this orange juice. Yes, it's toxic. It has a little bit more toxins than it should. It's probably not that beneficial for my body. But in the moment, does it serve you to drink it? Like, is it okay if you just do it once? Because you can't be perfect. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, just find a balance between being okay with having something occasionally because you're not having it every single day. So if you were choosing to have that orange juice every single day, then you'd be putting a lot of toxins in your body and that probably wouldn't be beneficial for you. But if you choose to have it 20% of the time, 10% of the time and feel okay with it and not be fearful, that right there is freedom. And that's also going to be beneficial for your body and not as toxic as the stress that you would feel if you were choosing to drink the orange juice with fear. Because if you're still choosing to drink it and you still have fear, you're still going to have stress. So it's really important to find a balance with being okay with choosing the less healthy things sometimes um, and also not leading with fear, if that makes sense. Yeah, 100%. And I think that like the thing that I always go back to when I'm talking about education and like nutrition education in particular with food freedom, because I think you and I both take like a very similar approach with it where we think the education component is important. And I think there's other, you know, approaches to food freedom and intuitive eating where it's like, okay, yeah, just like, you know, eat whatever you want or whatever. And essentially that is what we're teaching. We're teaching eat whatever you want. But I also think like seeing the education as empowerment and information can be like really really helpful to make those decisions, right? And to make a decision in each in each instance that you're coming up with too. So I think that it's like, you know, if we're talking about like the orange juice or whatever, you're like, yeah, okay. Like if I'm having this one time or once in a while, it's not going to make like that huge of a difference. And I think that that mentality around like, you know, oh my gosh, this is terrible. This is going to kill me or this is going to like ruin everything, whatever. That mentality is worse for you than like the toxic (laughs) orange juice itself. Right. And I think it's when I actually saw a study once where it was like this milkshake and like they told one group that the milkshake was um was like super healthy for them and was like gonna make them like super healthy and energetic etc and the other group they told them that the milkshake was like gonna make them fat and gain weight etc and i need to find the study because i talk about this all the time but to like just reference exactly and the group that was told that it would make them like gain weight actually did gain weight and the group that was told that it would make them really healthy like there was no actual changes to their body. So I think that's like a really empowering fact too, with just how you think about the foods that you're consuming is so different too. And it's going to change how your body digests them. So I think that's like something that's really important as well. But on that, like, 
piece of things too. So when you are working with clients, like say somebody is super fearful of food right now and in a place where like both of us were talking about, like where it's like that orthorexia place where they feel like it's really preventing them from living their life to the fullest, et cetera. And, you know, social situations affecting their relationship and they come to you. Like what is the first step that you go to? Because I think like the first step is always the hardest. And I know everybody has has a different approach. So can you talk a little bit maybe about like what was your first step, but also to like, what's the first step that you approach with clients? So my first step would be the second step that I approach with clients now. And that was just challenging myself and putting myself in those situations to get over my fear, because you have to do that at some point, you're never just going to overcome a fear. If you don't overcome the situation where you're fearful of. So I do that secondly with clients now, but that's what I did first all on my own. Um, And it definitely works, but it's hard without support. Uh, But what I do with my clients now, because I find they're normally um, afraid of food or like out of control around food because they're not eating enough food. And so they're also fearful of food because they feel out of control and they can't control themselves. So they're afraid they're going to eat that or do something bad or whatever. And usually that's because they're not eating enough food. So the first place I start with my clients is making them eat more food, specifically breakfast. Almost, I would say 99 out of 100 of my clients do not eat breakfast. (laughs) And I was there once too. I I intermittent fasted for like seven years, completely wrecked my system, caused binge eating, high cortisol, adrenal fatigue, like all these different kinds of things. I was also out of control around food all the time because I was so hungry. Like my nothing was working properly. So I approach it first by having my clients eat breakfast and eat more food. And it's almost like magic. That once they're fueling their body and getting enough fuel and getting enough enough calories, they like automatically feel better around these foods and they're not as fearful of them. Of course, there's still a little bit more work that we have to do, but it's like that that does a lot of work right there. It's just eating a proper amount of food and making sure you're fueled and then you don't feel so out of control and you're not really fearful because you feel safe inside, right? Yeah. 100%. And just really just kind of like looking at it from like this abundance mentality. And also it's like not starving yourself and trying to be smaller, but kind of like shifting it into like, how can I nourish my body? How can I be making sure that I'm like providing my body with the best nutrients that I need? And can you talk through, because you've talked about this a lot too, about how not eating enough and how it can like actually lead to weight gain. Because I think that's like a lot of things that people don't realize that it's like when you're not eating enough, all of these things add up and then, you know, binges happen or, you know, there's, there's other things that happen. And like you said, like your hormones are messed up, your metabolism is messed up, et cetera. So can you talk through that a little bit for anybody that like might not understand that or like maybe that concept is foreign to them? (laughs) Definitely. I feel like that concept is so foreign to so many people. Um, And so many people think it's not true that if you're under eating, you can gain weight. And I can't articulate this perfectly. um, But basically what happens is over time when you're chronically under eating for a long period of time. So if you're like on a diet for like a month and cutting your calories, yeah, this might put your body in a little bit of a stressful state, but not in a state where you're going to hold on to weight. So it's chronically over a long period of time when you're under eating, your body is going to be put under significant stress. And that's going to affect your hormones and your hormones run everything. Like as women, our hormones are so complex and they run like everything. So when you're under eating, you're going to have high cortisol because we wake up with high cortisol. If you're not eating breakfast in the morning, your cortisol is just going to continue to heighten. And that is a, a recipe for disaster internally, right? So there's one hormone that's out of balance. That just is a trickle domino effect to every other Mm -hmm. hormone becoming out of balance. So over time, your hunger hormone can get shut down. If you're not eating breakfast and your cortisol is so high, your hunger hormone is going to get shut down. So then you're out of, you can't even tell when you're hungry anymore. You think you're not hungry when really like your body needs food. Anyways, eventually your hormones will become so out of balance that your body will start just holding on to the fat. Because how we were created is like living back in the old days when we had to like go find our food and fight a lion, like, you know what I mean? So (laughs) we had to like, (laughs) back in the old days, our body, like what I'm trying to say is it would hold on to fat. Like we were created to survive 
living in the winter and like holding on to fat when we didn't have enough food, right? That's what I'm trying to get at. And so now that's exactly what's happening in this present day and age where it looks a lot different, but our bodies are still created the same. So if you're not eating, your body thinks you're in starvation mode, just like it was 200, 500 years ago, however long ago, when you were in winter and you didn't have all the food you needed, your body was starving. So it held on to fat to keep you alive. That's exactly what happens in this day and age when we under eat. It's the same thing. It's just a different situation, you know? Yeah. And I think that's so important for people to realize that, you know, sometimes when you think it's like you're going after this one goal and by doing that, it's like you're actually hurting yourself versus helping you and get towards that goal that you want. And I think one important thing that you mentioned is like you, you talk about the importance of breakfast. You talk about the importance of breakfast all the time. Right. And I would love to know what, what is your approach to breakfast? Like you did a whole series on TikTok of like different breakfasts and things like that of how to build a breakfast for blood sugar balance and healing hormones and also approaching it in a way that is like a food freedom approach too, because I know that there's like times when maybe you don't want like a quote unquote, like completely blood sugar balanced breakfast. And what do you do in those situations as well? So can you talk a little bit about like how you approach breakfast and how you would recommend somebody to approach that too? Yeah, absolutely. Um, great question. So I would say, I guess I approach it by making sure your breakfast is balanced and I want to put an emphasis on protein. So a lot of people are eating oats and acai bowls and uh, fruit for breakfast and like they're not balancing it out and they're not adding protein and the proper macronutrients that you need for a balanced meal to stabilize your blood sugar. So when you're not supporting your blood sugar first thing in the morning, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, it, it, your blood sugar and your hormones are connected. So it just kind of causes a disaster. It kind of causes two o'clock crashes, anxiety, cravings, like all these different things when you're not eating a balanced breakfast. And the number one focus is protein, like making sure you have a protein, making sure you have a carb and then a fat or a fiber or, or some fruit. If you like, you can add anything you want in there. Just make sure it's balanced out with the proper protein you need. I would focus between 25 to 35 grams. Um, I know it's hard to get a lot of protein. Like even I struggle sometimes getting 25 grams of protein. So just do your best. Even 20 is great, but focus on protein and that's going to help keep you satiated throughout the day. It's going to just, you're going to have so much energy. You're going to feel so much better. You're going to have such less cravings. Um, so that's just kind of how I approach it. It's like, what protein am I going to have? It's 90% of the time it's eggs for me. Um, and then sometimes I'll add like chicken sausage in there. And then I build my plate around that according to like what I have that week in my fridge. So sometimes it's potatoes, sometimes it's toast, whatever. Um, but I also approach breakfast with an intuitive eating approach. So it's like, I'm not going to make myself eat the same thing every day, just because it's like balanced and healthy. I'm going to eat what sounds good to me. Normally it's eggs <laughs> that sound good to yeah. me. But like you said, sometimes it's not, sometimes I do want an acai bowl or once in a while, I'm not a big oats person. I just don't like them that much, but once in a while I'll crave them. And I know just like a naked or empty acai bowl without protein or naked oats without protein is going to be a disaster for me, right? It's just going to lead me down a roller coaster of cravings and out of control eating all day long and all of that kind of stuff. So then again, that's where protein comes into play. So then we're like, okay, well, we want this like sugary carb heavy breakfast because that's what we're craving. And that's fine. You can have whatever you're craving, but how can we make it support your body? add protein. So I would add protein to my acai bowl if they had an option to add protein in there. I do love whole food protein more than like a powder. So even better if I can like add a side of eggs to my acai bowl or something like that. And then for oats, I add eggs if I have them because one, if you haven't tried that, it's delicious. And two, it's more balanced. <laughs> yeah. I love the approach of like looking at what can I add in too, because, you know, I love like saying that the, the addition mindset, and I think it's so different than that approach that both of us had come from of like, okay, eating less or, you know, how, what do I need to eliminate or what can't I have? And I think it's such a helpful yeah. way of thinking about it too. And just knowing too, it's like, again, going back to that empowerment, knowing like you just said, okay, well, if I just 
just have this without any protein or without adding anything into it, I'm probably going to be ravenous like through the rest of the day. Because I think so often, sometimes people say they'll be like, okay, well, I'm trying to like eat less. I'm trying to eat really healthy. And they just have fruit in the morning or something. And then it's like, they're starving by 10 AM and their energy levels are dipping. And then they're like, oh my gosh, I have no self-control. And then you start to beat yourself up. (laughs) But I think that it's so interesting because it's like, when I'm talking with my clients and things like that come up, I'm like, okay, well, like let's reflect on what we had and how our body reacted to it. And I think that's like a really good piece of the intuitive eating thing too, of just having that education of like how the body works and how you can support it too. So I think it's like a completely different approach that's really, really like really empowering, really. I know I've said that a lot, but I think that it's like, it's really <laughs> no, <helpful>. I agree. <laughs> it is. That's like exactly what I do with my clients. Like in order to get them into more of an intuitive eating approach, it's like, d- that's okay. If you want the oats and you don't want to balance it because like, you just don't want to do that. All right, cool. Do that and see how you feel. And then we'll talk about it next time. And then they know, okay, no, these make me feel crazy. I'm not going to make that decision anymore. You're so right. It's like the knowledge and the education and the information is so empowering for girls and like individuals to make the decision with food. Let's take a minute to talk about my ride or die for digestive and gut health. And that is seed symbiotic. If you're wondering what a symbiotic is, it is both a pre and probiotic in one amazing little pill. But actually I take two a day on an empty stomach every single morning. And trust me, I notice when I don't take it. It combines 24 clinically studied probiotic strains that are not found in yogurt, most supplements or fermented foods and beverages. Not only does the symbiotic benefit and improve our digestive health, but it also expands out into heart health, skin health, immunity, and better nutrient absorption. Seed not only adheres to FDA guidelines, but also all supplement guidelines globally. Seed has an on-staff scientific advisory board, and they're always staying on top of the science and are hundred percent transparent in sharing all the research on their product and prove efficacy. Seed ensures that all affiliates such as myself are educated and go through seed university to spread science and facts rather than false claims and promotes hashtag accountable influence. You can even test your knowledge on their website through a fun little quiz. Another thing to note about seed is that most probiotics don't even survive the trip to your gut, which is just wild. Seed obviously does and you can actually get the benefits from the symbiotic that way. Another really cool thing about Seed is that they care about the earth. You will receive one glass jar and then all of your refills come in recycled paper packaging and you so you get to be sustainable and healthy. It is a win-win. So as I mentioned, I take two pills every morning on an empty stomach. I absolutely love it. I drink it with lemon water or rose water. It is so good. Seed is free of dairy, gluten, soy, GMOs, binders, fillers, preservatives, 14 classes of allergens defined by the European Food and Safety Authority. So if you want to try out seed for yourself, you can use code Alicia15, that is A-L-Y-S-I-A-1-5 for 15% off your first month of seed. If you have any other questions, let me know, but you can also find the link in the show notes. If you want to try out seed for yourself, I promise you, you won't be disappointed and your gut will definitely thank you with that. Let's get back to the show. So another thing I want to talk about just kind of in this same realm or topic. So say somebody is like on vacation or had an off day or an off meal or whatever, where they weren't adding in protein, they weren't eating in balanced meals. What is your approach to not allowing that to like really just throw you off and really have like a huge mental effect on you too? on like on your mindset, not beating yourself up about it. And how do you kind of get back to to those like healthy habits afterwards. Because I think so often people like those are the days that throw people off of making this a lifestyle. Because I think like a lot of people will view it as failure and then like be like, okay, well, I failed. I can't do this. And just kind of continue down that rabbit hole. And again, like being your own worst enemy, your own worst critic. So I'd love for like a few tips from you that you like give to clients if those sorts of days happen. Yeah, absolutely. That is definitely the reason most people give up on their health and wellness goals because they think perfection. It's it's a very black and white thinking. It's very 
all or nothing thinking, um, that you have to be perfect or else you're a failure and you're going to give up on everything because you didn't show up perfectly. So I approach it by tell, like kind of teaching my clients the all or nothing thinking and how that's holding them back. Like how, how nothing in life is ever going to look perfect or be perfect a hundred percent of the time. So wanting yourself to be that is already setting yourself up for failure because that's not physically possible to be perfect every single day. Like there are some days where I probably do have an acai bowl without protein. And then I eat Chick-fil-A for lunch because my cravings are all over. And then I don't eat dinner. Like that just happens sometimes that's life. And I think the number one thing to help clients with this is of course, like getting away from the all or nothing mindset and giving yourself grace. It is so, so, so important to give yourself grace and allow yourself to mess up. Like if you don't mess up and you don't fail, you're never going to get better anyway. So it's like sometimes messing up or having one of those days can actually be good and further you along. It doesn't have to be black or white. Like I, I quit because I didn't do perfect. It's like, no, what did you just learn? Like you could have learned so much from that day. You could learn what not to do next time. You could learn that maybe it's okay to do some of this next time, whatever. So kind of giving yourself grace, not expecting yourself to show up perfectly from the very beginning. Like do not think that any journey is going to be perfect because it's not. So definitely allow yourself to fail, allow yourself to mess up. That's how you know you're working and getting somewhere. Um, excuse me. And another thing that I do like kind of to help my clients with this is journaling. Like I really, really dive deep into the journal and my sessions with my clients. And I give them lots of journal prompts to take on their own and do at night or whenever they need them on vacation or something like that. And getting into your journal and kind of just like understanding what's going on and writing your thoughts down and answering some questions or asking yourself some questions you might not normally ask yourself to understand what's going on can also be so empowering. Um, it can, and it can really help you find that grace for yourself when you're like getting into your thoughts and seeing what's going on. Because sometimes if we're not like sitting with ourselves or we're not like seeing what's going on inside of us, it's hard to give us grace, right? Cause you're just like, what's wrong with you? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. You need to show up perfectly, like get it together, whatever. So sit with it and see what's going on and give yourself a little bit of grace for being human because that's what you are human. You can't be perfect if you're a human. <laughs> Yeah. 100%. I think ditching that perfection and knowing that there is no perfect when it comes to our health or wellness or fitness or anything, life in general, because I think it's important too. I think it's like so often we think, oh, I need to eat like the same every day or this needs to look the same every day. And really it's like, as women, we aren't stagnant beings either. So it's like, we're constantly changing. Our energy levels are changing. Our energy needs are changing. Like it's just so many things are changing every single day. So I think it's important to really tune in. And like you mentioned, like look at the questions that you're asking yourself. And I think just something as simple as changing the questions that you're asking yourself, it can be really helpful. Like, again, like what we were talking about, like, what can I add to my plate instead of like, Oh, I can't have this, or I can't have that. Like, or like, how can I feel really good in this meal? Like both physically and emotionally, et cetera. Are there any questions that come up to you that like for journal prompts or anything that like really help with food freedom that you have like used or that you kind of always go to for your clients that are really helpful? Like maybe like one or two or something that like somebody can journal on. Um, yeah, I have ones that are more so for like overeating episodes and they also can be for food freedom and I'm like blanking on what they all are, but it's a little practice that we do, um, that I do with my clients and it's like something along the lines of basically you like allow yourself to eat a fear food or something you're afraid of, or maybe you just overate and then you'll sit down and kind of dive inward and be like, how did that make me feel? what else is going on? So maybe you're like, I'm just a stupid idiot, but no, really like what else is actually going on? Like, is there, can we pinpoint something that's like stressing you out subconsciously or you're trying to just numb it? You know what I mean? So it's like, how did that make me feel? Uh, what's actually going on? And I think, what can I do differently next time? So there's five of them, but I can only really remember those three and it's something those along those lines. Yeah. They're super powerful. 
Yeah, I think that's like very, very helpful because I think also looking at like what else is going on, because I think so often it's like it's not the food and it doesn't have anything to do with the food. It's like we're using the food as a crutch to distract us from what is actually going on. So I think that's a really important thing to look at as well to see like, okay, why did this happen? Again, getting inquisitive and getting more education so that then you know next time. And it's like, yes, this takes work, but it's like, I mean, I know that both in like Taryn and I, we speak about this all the time, how like we kind of feel like further removed from the food freedom stuff now. It's like, obviously it's something that we both talk about and coach clients on all the time, but it bec- we begin to get like more further removed from it because we're not needing to use all these tools all the time because you won't always need to use them all the time, but it is a journey at that end too, you know, and it's not that, you know, thoughts will never come up or whatever, but it's, it's like nice to know that there's like light at the end of the tunnel, you know, but I think it like, if somebody is going through that, these are all really, really good tools to like use too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so. there is light at the end of the tunnel for sure. <laughs> there is freedom out there. I promise that we're both testimonials to that. (laughs) Yeah, 100%. Before we wrap up, I kind of want to talk about comparison a little bit before um, we end on things. And just because I think that body image and comparison is so linked to all of these things that we're talking about um, with food freedom, because I think that so often the food is controlled because we want to look a certain way. So I would love to know for you, how did you improve like your own body image over the years and stay out of like comparison to others? Because I think that that's something that like really sends people back into the diet culture and the restriction and all of that all the time. So I would love to know like what that looked like for you and how you're continuing to improve it. Cause I know it's like, it's always a work in progress and, and a, an improvement in progress too. Yeah. Um, great question. I feel like something that helped me was focusing on me and not focusing on everyone else because there's so much information. There's so many influencers. There's so many fitness people. There's so much online. There's so many people to look at and it can be like so overwhelming. Um, and then you're comparing to what everyone else is doing, right? Oh, they ran a marathon. They're vegan. They lost a bunch of weight, like whatever. And you're like, Oh my gosh, like I suck. It it just comes back to me. It's like, I, 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 well, okay. Take that I and focus on yourself and stop focusing on all these people. So I had to take a step back and like, look at myself and what, what was going to work for me and my life versus everyone else. And I was trying a long time just to be like everyone else. And it was never working until I actually took a step back. And I'm like, what's fueling me? What serves me? What movement do I enjoy? What movement makes me actually feel good and doesn't make me feel absolutely miserable and not want to show up? So it just kind of what foods fuel me because it's probably not the same as like my favorite influencer, you know, so kind of just taking a look at you and focusing on you. And I know that can be hard and it can be helpful to mute people, even if you love someone and, and you can love an influencer or love someone online or love your friend and they can still be triggering you in a negative way. And that's not because of them. That's usually because of you, which is okay. But take just take a step back and like mute people that are doing that. If you're having a struggle focusing on what it is that works for you or that you need. And another thing going off of this is like, you might not find out what you need right away. So like keep trying because that goes back to the all or nothing. Like you could think, Oh, like to feel good in my body and to stop comparing, like, I'm going to do Pilates because that's going to make me feel really good or whatever. But then you hate Pilates. So like, don't stop there. Try something else. Try something that makes you feel good in your own skin and your body and know that's what's working for you. And you don't need to be doing what everyone else is doing. I think it really helped for me when I started weightlifting versus like running all the time. (laughs) And then I just started kind of like falling in love with what my body could do. And then I just started finding more things that were serving me. Um, and I think that's kind of the approach that I took to help myself get out of comparison and all that. But I will also say it never fully goes away. I mean, I don't know, maybe it does for some other people, but there's still going to be those moments where I am comparing, but it's like, take those things, you know, about yourself, use the journal prompts and come back to what is true 
Um, because you, it, I just don't think comparison always goes away. Kind of the same thing with imposter syndrome. <laughs> I don't think that always goes away. You just have to have tools to get out of it and see it with a, di- a different perspective. Yeah. I think focusing inward is really important and focusing on you and just like really clinging to that fact that like the bio-individuality that nobody is you and nobody knows what's best for you other than you. So I think that's like a really important thing to take into account. And, and yeah, and I think like thinking about all of these tools that we're talking about as like tools in your toolbox and, and knowing that if you're feeling enough funk or you're feeling like you're getting back into a comparison trap or back into a restrictive mentality. Okay. What are the things that helped me get out of here before? So like what tools can I dig back up? Right. Because like I said, like, I feel like both of us have talked about how we feel a little bit further removed from this, but that's not to say that like old thoughts don't come up when it comes to body image or when it comes to food freedom, like any of that stuff, like, of course, I still have moments and things that come up. But then I kind of look and I'm like, okay, well, what are the tools I have to deal with this? And the more equipped you are to get out of it faster and get back onto the track that like you're looking to get towards. So I think that's really, really important. Yes. Now it's like a thought that comes and goes and it doesn't, it, it can still be there sometime, but I have the tools. I use the tools the thought comes and I let it go. And before it would be like debilitating, but yeah, use those tools, get back to that, get back to what helped you in the first place. And also know that like, if you are in that place and you're trying to get back to it, no, you don't have to do it all at once too. So slow and steady always wins the race. It does. It does. And there's no like journey. There's no finish line. It's a journey. Like it's like, it's going to be these like ebbs and flows. And I think that's something too. It's like, we're like, okay, like, I don't think I'm ever going to say like, okay, like I've, I've found food freedom a hundred percent. I think it's more of like, it's a practice. Same thing with like having a positive body image or whatever. Like, I think this is all a practice. It's not like a destination that like you get to and you're like, okay, I'm cured. Like, you know, there's always going to be situations and like outside things that are happening that might trigger old thoughts that might go on that might present a whole brand new freaking challenge that then you're dealing with, right? Like I'm dealing with it in pregnancy right now with like intuitive eating and movement and things like that. I'm like, wow, these are things that I didn't think would come up. But you know, this like new piece of my life and part of my life is really challenging me and, and things that like if look way I'm thinking with body image and you know, all these things. So I think that it's like, it's important to know that it's, it is always a journey. There's, there's no finish line and just kind of showing up for you in the best way that you can, which takes me to my ending question, which is what does self-love mean to you? What does self-love mean to me? That's good. Um, Honestly, I, I think it means two things. One, showing up for yourself because if you're not showing up for yourself, I don't think you're really giving yourself love. I know that when I maybe take a break showing up for myself, like I just talked about it this morning on Instagram, where uh, I was getting on my phone every morning and scrolling through Instagram and not giving myself any time. It was just like, I was immediately in the world as soon as my eyes open. And man, those were some tough days mentally. Like I was beating myself up inside my head. That led to me not being motivated to go to the gym. I didn't feel like making lunch. So I just skipped it. It was like it all stemming from me not showing up for myself, but like immediately showing up for other people online, right? To go like and comment and see what my friends are doing, but forgetting about myself. And then the past two days, I've showed up for myself for an hour in the morning. And I feel I love myself again. You know, I'm not saying those negative things about myself. It's like, I'm feeling good. Um, But the other thing that I would say is also giving yourself grace, just like we talked about, like, if I weren't able to give myself grace for my bad days, because they happen a lot, (laughs) like it's life, I don't know where I'd be, I'd probably be like, just depressed if I didn't give myself grace and like allow myself love myself enough to like give myself that grace. So for me, I think it's showing up for yourself and making sure when your cup's empty, you, you show up for you because you're important. And then also give yourself the grace for when you don't do it perfectly and you don't show up. That's what it is for me. 
Yeah, I love that. And I think it's important to to like really build in that time for that self-reflection like you were just talking about because literally it's like you posted about that this morning and we were talking about this before we started <laughs> recording and I was like, shit, I've literally been doing this for like the past month probably like waking up and I, just because I don't want to get out of bed because I'm just really tired right now and I don't want to get out of bed and I sit on my phone for an hour and it's just like not the best use of my time. It doesn't plant, it doesn't end up being the best days for me. And I think taking that time for yourself and looking at that reflection, looking at what's serving you and what isn't is really, really important. So I love that answer. And I would love to know where everybody can find you, where they can follow you. I know there is an ebook that is, we don't know if it's going to be out by the time this comes out, but if it is, I'll talk about it. I would have already talked about it in the intro, but can you tell everybody a little bit about like the ebook that's going to be coming out, where to find you, follow you, work with you, all the things. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you can find me at underscore Taryn Shank on Instagram or at dot Taryn Shank on TikTok. Thoughtfullythriving.com is my website, but soon that will be switched over to TarynShank.com. So either one of those you can find me at. Um, and then yeah, you can check out my food freedom program in the next 30 days. So like Alicia said, I have kind of I don't fully relate as much to food freedom as I used to. And I'm kind of transitioning in my business a little bit where I'm going to be doing some different things with clients in the near future. And so I am not taking as many food freedom clients anymore. I actually haven't in like three months. So I'm creating this program that way people can still get the help that they need because I've helped so many girls all over the world overcome food freedom. Like I want to still be able to help you. Um, so I have an ebook coming out. That's going to be four simple steps to food freedom that you can kind of do on your own. And hopefully in the next 30 days or less that will be out. Um, and when it is out, I will open up some calls for food freedom clients, specifically if you want a support call while you do the program on your own. So super excited about that. Amazing. Yay. And also if anybody is interested in, being a health coach or is a health coach or any of that, Taryn and I are also doing our second round of coaching for coaches, um, which is yeah. launching very soon too. So I believe by the time this comes out, it's going to be open for signups and enrollment mm -hmm. and all of that. So I will link that in the bio too. And that's where we help health coaches do what we've done, which is make successful businesses out of health coaching and really take it full time. And we give you literally our entire playbook when it comes to coaching and like what we've done and how we work with clients, how we structure programs, all the things. So definitely check that out too. Um, thank you so much, Taryn, for being here. You're the best. I love chatting with you and thank, thank you, you for having me. This is amazing. I appreciate you. All right, love. I hope that you enjoyed that episode. And if you are new here and find yourself wanting more, you can find me on all social platforms at purely Pope and the Purely Podcast on Instagram specifically. And you can claim your seven day free trial of Purely You, your home for becoming the best version of you with access to monthly health coaching and body loving Pilates flows in three different categories, Elevate, Cardiolates, and Mindful Mat with new flows and movements added weekly, as well as monthly challenges at purelypope.com. Thank you for being here. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you next Thursday. Bye now.